Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kate and I'm really passionate about art, vintage style and fashion and making people feel their best. This is my first video on here and today I really just wanted to touch on a topic that is special and important for me and something that I've definitely struggled with and do struggle with as well. Vintage fashion. How to get into it and why it is so hard. Like really hard. It can be really intimidating going into vintage fashion. So I wanted to break it down and go through a list of different things that I have found hard about it and then ways that have helped me through with it and express my unique style. So what is today's style and trend? More than ever now, it seems that there is so many varieties of different trends and styles. It seems trend is even not really in trend as a word. In fact, aesthetic or core seems to be more in. But there's been things circulating like Barbie core, mermaid core, cottage core, baddie aesthetic. That's a lot and it's also exhausting. And so, I mean, who wants to continue following trends every single day that also change so regularly? I mean, personally, I just got exhausted and I thought, you can only get so much confidence from something if it's your own. If you think about it, like someone tells you, okay, great, latex pink shorts are trending. You're like, oh, I better start wearing them. You may hate latex pink shorts. I mean, I would never wear such a thing. And you're only gonna be able to find so much confidence inside a style that someone's already created for you. Which is why I thought, okay, enough is enough. I'm looking back to when fashion, in my personal opinion, was much more exciting and had the availability to be whatever you wanted it to be. I love living now because you can look back and find the vintage style from whenever you want. I have the whole 20th century to look from, starting from the early 1900s going up to the 1990s. So some days I might decide, oh, I wanted to dress in 1930s and do my hair this specific way, or other days it might be 1940s, or sometimes I throw all of them together and it's just my style, I don't even put it inside a box. And I think it's very important not to put your style inside rigid boxes because then you don't have any creativity to be someone new every day. For me personally, sometimes I wake up and I wanna do something completely different. And I think that's the beautiful thing about self-expression, the spontaneity within it and the freedom to be able to change how you feel and how you express how you're feeling that day with what you're wearing as well. So the second thing that I have found to be one of the biggest barriers, if you will, to getting into vintage fashion and finding my own style has been effort. It can be really hard to find the time to actually invest in yourself and invest in figuring out what you wanna wear and what makes you feel confident. If you just go into an old navy store, for example, or a Target, you don't have to think. You can just go in and all the fashion will be there. That's what's trending, that's what's available, and then you can go in and buy it. Whereas when you are looking outside of trends, it can take a lot more time to actually go out and look for things, whether that be finding things on eBay or Etsy, or even just looking in your normal stores for things and how to style them differently. For me personally, I'm really big on thrift store shopping, partly because I just don't have that much money to spend, but also because I, I think it's just a lot more climate friendly and you're able to find pieces from a way bigger variety of time than just what you're being sold. That can take time. So allowing yourself to say, well, I'm, I only have to do it a certain amount of days or allowing yourself to not step into the entire full look. Say you want to dress in 1940s fashion. You don't have to get everything historically accurate to what you saw in fashion magazines or in films or in photos of movie stars. You don't have to have the perfect hair and the lipstick or the outfit. That is a lot of effort. And sometimes for me, I can just pair a blouse with a skirt together and I will curl my hair, but having that freedom to really pull back or go all for it is really great. So understanding that you don't always need to put in that complete effort in order to get the look and feel confident in what you're wearing. Sometimes it's just the intention of choosing what you wanna wear instead of what's being fed to you. So the third point I wanted to talk about is expense. 
especially the expensive myth around fashion. When I first started wanting to get into vintage fashion, I thought, oh, there's no way I can ever afford that. Because you go on Etsy or eBay and look at true vintage or even vintage reproduction stores, it is quite expensive. And if you're prepared to pay that, that is wonderful. I have been prepared to pay that several times, but other times you just can't find it within your means to spend $50 plus on just a blouse. And that's where I realized it is a myth. Dressing vintage does not have to be expensive whatsoever. And it's about really looking closely at the different cuts and the styles that were then and seeing how you can find other pieces. Like the biggest hack I have ever found is realizing if I buy 1980s pieces, I still get a very similar silhouette as long as I go with specific patterns and not the common bright patterns of the 80s. I still have the shoulder pads and I'm able to style it in a very vintage way and I might pay $20 for dress opposed to 150 to 400 even going up and up and up and up. So I think when I have found ways for me to cut corners and go thrift store shopping and find blouses and skirts or even looking on eBay and Vinted, Mercury or even Etsy, when I've looked in the right way I have actually been able to save a lot more money and not not feeling the pressure to only buy complete historical vintage reproduction pieces or historical pieces as they are has saved me a lot of money and I haven't felt as overwhelmed by it as well. If you do want to go out there and spend that money on a completely real to the time vintage piece, go for it. I have done that as well and it is a lot of fun doing that. But also you don't have to do that to achieve the look. And I will definitely make another video in the future talking about different places and ways I found of styling things that is more affordable and cheaper as well to save you money that still looks really vintage. So the fourth point is confidence. How do you find the confidence to not dress within a trend, to not follow what everyone else is doing and to step outside of your own personal comfort zone and dress in a way that you've maybe not ever let yourself dress or a way that you've only watched other people dress in but not been able to let yourself dress that way. This is a tough one. I do think there is value in the statement, fake it till you make it in a sense. But also you do have to look within yourself and ask like, what, are, what am I afraid of happening? Because oftentimes it's not gonna be true. The times I have left the house in full vintage fashion, I will get looks from people because I do live in a small town and it's definitely not what's trending or what people often see young women wearing. But for the most part, I have found, it is really strange, but I've gotten less attention when I have dressed vintage than when I don't dress vintage. But most of the time it's positive or people just don't even notice. And that has been really encouraging for me realizing that. And really when I find that confidence deep within myself, I can pull off any look. Also just starting, that would be a big tip. The same thing with any project, whether that be artistic or whether that be style related or following your dreams and passions and career related is just starting because oftentimes the fear can build up into your head to be much more of a bigger thing than it actually is. And then you can get way more scared of it. I just had to try it and then I realized, oh wow, this actually isn't as bad as I thought it would be. And I'm not as scared and I actually feel really good. You will find that confidence when you align with your integrity of how you're expressing yourself. And oftentimes the lack of self-confidence can also come from not expressing yourself how you truly are, whether that be just dressing in modern trends and not really taking the time to think about how you wanna express yourself. And I don't think that that's something that you can wait to feel as well. You just have to go for it, put on the clothes, let yourself buy those pieces, let yourself try out different styles, and you may find that the confidence is already there waiting for you. You just had to take the first step. So it almost feels a little bit like activism in a way to step out of the house dressing in a way that I'm dressing for me. So another interesting thing that I did wanna to touch on as well is social media and being passive with finding your unique style. I know for me, I can follow hundreds and hundreds of vintage creators who are all dressing completely how they wanna dress in vintage fashion. And I'm going specifically with 1930s and 40s fashion because for me, that is what I'm really interested in, but it could be any era for you. But I found that if I'm watching other people do their thing, 
that can sometimes replace the thing in my brain that tells me that I need to do that too. And even though it's not enough to watch other people living out your dream, social media can make you feel that way. So one of the things that I have done is sort of stepped back a bit from that and being like in my own life, if I'm not watching anyone do this, do I still feel this need to dress this way and to express myself in this era of fashion? Or do I just wanna watch other people dress up in it and that's great and that's all that I wanna do. And when I stepped back, I really realized, wow, I've been letting them kind of do the work for me in a sense and I really wanna dress this way. And I think social media can be an excuse to hold off or wait on your dreams because you see other people doing them. So social media is definitely not all negative. Also, it can be a really encouraging and positive community. And that if there's vintage creators out there dressing the way they want, and I see that they're happy, they're fine, they're thriving, and they look beautiful in it, I'm also more inclined to start doing it because I think, well, if they can, I can too. And I do think this is an important and a beautiful thing about the community that social media creates. So yeah. And the last point I wanted to make was very simple. Just follow the joy. As long as you are following what makes you happy, that is all you really need to worry about. Sometimes it's just about how you feel inside at that moment. Maybe you are uncomfortable dressing outside of trends and maybe for you, you are in a place where you just wouldn't feel safe to dress outside of that and that is okay. Maybe it is enough for you to just have a community online on social media where you watch people dressing that way and that's all you need from it. I think this has really, really been an important and life-changing thing for me personally is that when I follow my happy, when I follow that spark, whatever you want to call it, the joy, it just expands and multiplies and I find myself living with more joy and abundance than I ever thought was possible. It can be scary, but that's why just starting can be great because then you can see, how does this make me feel? Does this follow and feed my happy? Does this follow and feed my joy? Or do I really want to try something else? And there are no rules. There is no one out there saying, you shouldn't do this. Well, maybe there are, but they're meanies and we just don't need to worry about them. There are no rules. And I promise you, every single person in the vintage community, so following their rules, but if everyone follows their own rules, then no one needs to follow other people's rules. So you can dress really however you want. Maybe that's vintage, but vintage can mean anything. In being a human in this earth, there is no obligation to be like anyone else. It's okay to take inspiration from people. If you see someone, you're like, wow, they are really cool. I really totally want to be doing what they're doing. Go for it. But there is no obligation for you to dress and be like anyone else. And in fact, you're probably gonna find your happy is fed when you totally just follow where you wanna go. So those are the different things that I wanted to talk about today. And this is my first video. And so we'll see how it goes. I'm just really excited to be on here and starting this platform. I want to as well do a lot more vintage styling videos. I have also bought some incredible vintage pieces recently, which I definitely wanna share with all of you. And I am making new art pieces. I also have a Patreon, which I will link below, and an Instagram where I do a lot more art. So this is just the beginning of the journey for me. Thank you so much for watching and being here with me today. Remember, follow your happy and leave me a comment down below about a time where you really followed that joy and were rewarded with it. I think for me, it was filming this video today and I have found it really hard to get here to film, but I am definitely feeling fed from doing this. So thank you so much for watching and have an absolutely beautiful day and stay true to yourselves. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye.